Hello YouTube. Well, today I am visiting the home of John and Eula Kendrick. Uh, he was a, a governor of Wyoming and actually signed a statewide prohibition uh, law six months before the nationwide uh, prohibition took effect. Um, he was a teetotaler, although his rest of his family was not. Um, they've started building this house. It's called Trails End in 1908 and took five years. Uh, was finally finished in uh, 1913. And they, they lived here, um, well, lived here quite a long time. Um, he called it Trails End, and that's, uh, he had worked at cattle drives, and they actually owned a ranch, uh, and I'll get into all that, uh, when we get inside. So we're in the, uh, the main entrance, and it, what's cool is the like the ceiling is painted canvas and they had the electric, like a lot of other few houses in town, but they had just 12 of those light bulbs up in there. And where most houses, if they had electric at all, they had two. And the house is furnished uh, with the original pieces from 1913 on up uh, when they first moved into the house. And all of the paneling is quarter, quarter sawn oak from um, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Why the name Trails End? Well, uh, he did come up from Texas and had ranching in the area before he became governor of Wyoming. Um, actually, their, their ranch was over 200,000 acres uh, in Montana and uh, Wyoming. And he called this Trails End because this was the end of his personal trail, not necessarily uh, any other reason. <laughs> Mrs. Kendrick uh, didn't like to cook. As a matter of fact, she admitted that she was pretty bad at it, uh, but she did enjoy hosting parties. And uh, this dining room table could be extended out and could seat 20 people. And what was sort of cool is this little brass button here in the floor uh, that would be under her chair and she could just discreetly press it with her foot it would ring a buzzer uh, in the uh, kitchen for then to call in the butler or you know more service so between the, the dining room with the nice pocket doors is a walk-in vault, which is located here between the, and the uh, butler's pantry. So they could, um, you know, store a nice place to store all the, uh, the sterling silverware. And a nice oak ice box. And of course the Butler's pantry would have all of the dishes and a dumb waiter goes up, I'm sure the second floor will find that up there. And I'm into the the kitchen. So coming up this beautiful 
staircase up to the second floor and greeted with a nice library and a wall of portraits. Um, not all of these people actually visited here. Uh, this would have more likely been uh, family members and so on, but... So this is Manville's bedroom, and it's smaller than his sister's. But that was because the prevailing idea at the time was that boys didn't need a lot of space. They need a place to sleep and a place to do their homework. And that's what he had. And he went on to college at Yale in the uh, 1920s. And with the letters that were sent home, it was pretty clear that I uh, did not really participate in Prohibition. That uh, one of his friends, uh, the letters that they have from him, a from, friend from Massachusetts, that they, almost every one had a mention of alcohol in it. This is the master bedroom. There's my telephone here on the wall. Another one over there on the desk. And when they, uh, when he, he was serving in the Senate, uh, she was the perfect senator's wife of, at the time, uh, perfect partner. She preferred reading the uh, the current bills being passed in Congress, and rather than the the fiction that was out at the time, and uh, others also took notice and, and considered them the the perfect political couple. And this is their daughter, uh, Rosa May, and. In Wyoming, even before it was a state, they had granted women suffrage in um, 1869. So a good, um, almost just over 50 years before uh, women were granted the right to vote. So she was actually able to vote when she turned 21 two years before women in the rest of the country were able to vote. And this is the uh, second floor maid's cleaning closet. And one of the house's fuse boxes. I like that. Um, and they had something that was interesting. It was a... Uh, whole house vacuum and you could you know it made it easier they didn't have to haul uh, a vacuum cleaner all over the place like upright ones we have um, before the vacuums of course she had to sweep the floors every day take the rugs out beat them with a, a rug beater which is what that is not maybe not every day but um, so when we get down to the basement, hopefully we'll be able to see the uh, motor and collector box for the vacuum. In uh, 1927, Rosemary married Major Herbert Riley Harmon. Uh, he was a West Point graduate. Eventually, uh, he didn't. He stayed in, in the uh, service till 1956, and he was the commander of the 13th Air Force during World War II, Air Force representative of the United Nations, and the first superintendent of the Air Force Academy. And uh, he had a, a daughter and a son. Manville 
married Claire Diana Cummings. She was a champion rifle shooter, rural traveler, daughter of U.S. Surgeon General Hugh Smith Cumming. Uh, she's a very popular debutante in uh, Washington, and her friends were amazed that she left, uh, forsake the city life for the wilds of Wyoming. Uh, Manville took over Operation Family Ranches, and they settled here where she raised two sons and helped care for Manville's aging mother. And just around the corner here is, this was a guest room, um, but it became the nursery, actually this became the apartment uh, within the house for Manville and his wife, and eventually this became uh, the nursery. So up here on the third floor is the ballroom. They, they really love music. There's like record players all over. Uh, and if they were uh, had a live band here, which they did on occasion, uh, they could play for the musician's loft and be out of the way of the dancers. This originally was gonna be a playroom, but by the time uh, the house was done, because it took so long, they, um, it, they made it into a ballroom. Rosa May and Manville in the early 1900s, and then John was 5'11", and Eula was 5'5". Five five. And off of the ballroom underneath the musician's loft is the servant's quarters, and here's where that Dumb waiter, or silent waiter from the down in the kitchen would come up. Up here on the third floor. One of the servants' rooms, and we aren't allowed in. So some of some of the things are and um, they did have a firefighting system. So we're up here on the third floor. We've got a nice hose. And of course, that's the uh, connection to the whole house vacuum up here. And one of the, another of the servant's quarters. And across the hall, one of the, the maids. And their bathroom. I think rainhead showers are a new thing. Not really. And a toilet or water closet in there, and and here's an example of uh, scales to weigh yourself. And contrasting with the those beautiful front stairs, here are the the back stairs. And the servants would go up and down. Very narrow, and very steep. But then again, they didn't waste space on the servants. Now, from the second floor to the first floor, those back stairs are a little bit longer, a little bit less steep, and carpeted. They come out near the kitchen and 
the maid's breakfast room is through there. And you could ring the third floor owner coat hall uh, to answer. Hit the red button, basement, stable. So from right here off the kitchen, they, they, uh, they could call from up there down to here, vice versa. So along, alongside the phone intercom system, this is an alarm if somebody opened a vault that would go off so you'd know somebody was in, doing that. And up here above it is an annunciator. There are little, there are numbers uh, that drop down if you ring one of the many, many doorbells to let you know which, which door you needed to go answer. Next to the dumbwaiter was a laundry chute. And meant you didn't have to haul all that laundry from the upper floors down here. And right off of the laundry room. And it's, I believe that's one of the original boilers here. So this would have been uh, a library office. What's sort of cool in this room is a Regina. If you look real close, you can see these big metal discs. Those were, it was a wind up. Uh, then those were music. It's a big uh, wind-up music box. And then, and of course, 1911 Edison came up with a, his player. that was the, the brass discs. And eventually, he uh, came up with a different one that would play the, the flat albums that we know now. All right, this is the uh, the drawing room. You see the uh, the fireplace and quite a spacious room. Lots of seating. The doorway right over here leads out to the the main entrance and closed off with the curtains or the pocket doors. And another piano. They did love their music. Uh, John was a uh, known temperate. He, uh, when he was on the cattle drives, when they get to a town, uh, he would stay camp and save his money and not go on a drunken spree like a lot of his uh, compatriots. Mrs. Kendrick, on the other hand, did enjoy a drink now and then uh, when they were sailing to Europe as soon as they crossed the... Uh, international or the in the international waters she enjoyed a drink and as I mentioned uh, Manville definitely enjoyed his uh, beverages while in at Yale so now let's uh, take a step outside and then check out the grounds so we step out of the office and off of the uh, drawing room and this nice little veranda now it leads us out onto the grounds. Now, when they first built this, there was nothing here. It was just a bare hill, no trees, and no nothing. Um, and 1911, Kendricks hired a Minneapolis firm of Morrill and Nichols to design a tree-filled, semi-formal outdoor space. It was more park than yard. And there's things that uh, never got done. They, they did this in a natural style, but this area right here was supposed to be a sunken pool or a pergola leading to a sunken pool, but they, uh, you know, I think they got like to sundial it. Probably doesn't tell a really good time when being in the shade all the time now. 
but you see you got walking paths and beautiful views and I'll walk around a little bit see what we can find so we have this nice brochure that it's got labeled where um and what different kinds of trees are and uh in 110 years, some of them gotten quite big. Got a cool uh, sculpture here from a tree that died at Grandfather Clock and a couple of books. And if you notice this line of concrete, this was planned to be uh, a brick wall around it, never got built. They did pour the uh, the foundation completely around it, but somewhere along the line, the decision was made not to uh, put put in a wall. Another sculpture here on the on the grounds from a tree that had died. Wings of fancy. It was done in 2019. Nice view, I'm sure it was different in that day, uh, but overlooking the field and football, or the, the track and the football for the local school. You know, I used to sit up here in the shade and watch the events. So this is the uh, carriage house. And it is now a uh, theater. So this is the the back side of the house and this is where deliveries would have been made. Uh, kitchens there and clean outs for the chimney and I think Underneath that ramp or somewhere back in here would be the, the coal chute. Well, I think I'm going to end uh, my tour of Trails End here in the orchard. A nice little shady picnic area, a few benches around. Um, grounds are open all the time, seems to be. The tours of the house are $5 for non-resident. I think uh, Wyoming residents, I think you get a couple bucks off. Um, pretty cool place. And it's interesting to step back into the, the roaring 20s and uh, time of prohibition and uh, time 100 years ago when, when women got the vote and just a step back in time, um, I'm glad I found this place. So I'm gonna get back on the road and get to something that's was happened, oh, 50 years earlier. So I'll see you later, YouTube. So I'm just sitting here being quiet and mom and baby wandered up to take a look. Another reason to like this place. Women. Yeah.